what actually is the Animal Ada project that you've established? So the Animal Ada project is a veterinary not-for-profit organization. We go around various Ghanaian communities. We select communities that are in need or underserved. Can you take time to educate us about what rabies 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 a rabies is? Rabies is a very fatal or deadly viral disease that one symptoms or signs that there is no cure. That's feeling sick and it's rabies. That's the end. You are going to die. Welcome to another edition of the King Obed podcast. In today's episode, how well do you want to give back to the society? Do you love the space of volunteerism? Today, we want to break it down how to be a volunteer. And with me is a guest who is doing so well in the space of volunteerism. She is a vet surgeon from Ghana and the founder of Animal Aida Project. She is in the person of Akusia Kuminyakun. Akusia, welcome to the King Obed podcast. Thank you, Obed. Nice to be here. Great. Um, so you decided to establish the Animal Aida Project. What inspired you to do this? Okay, um, the Animal Aida Project didn't start as an NGO per se. It was just a mm -hmm. program I needed to do for the Clinton Global Initiative Fellowship as my commitment to action. So as something I wanted to do to help make the world a better place. So I applied with having a free mass vaccination okay. in one community in Ghana, and we were selected. So at the end of our mentorship program, we were supposed to carry out our commitment to action and write a report about it. So we did one vaccination program. And I liked the feedback. I liked how mm -hmm. it went. And I felt, no, this shouldn't end here. We can do more. So we did it again the following year. And I was like, no, we need to maintain this. So we had to put structures in place to form an NGO per se. But the dream wasn't initially to start an NGO. The dream was for somewhere in the future, maybe 10 years from now, to start an animal shelter on its own. Okay, okay. So what is the Clinton Foundation about? What do they do? Why did they decide to support you? Okay, so the Clinton Initiative Program is more of a fellowship program given to people around the world who are who want to create a change in their societies. So okay. it's, it spans from refugee work to climate change to public health to education, a whole lot. So they, are, they send applications or they open applications year round. I think mm -hmm. ours was in November, April. I don't really remember. So you apply you write a series of essays, like how normal fellowship programs are. Yes. Then you select what you want to do to make the world a better place. Then you explain. So once you are selected, you go through a series of mentorship from alumni from the fellowship and other seasoned people who can help make the world a better place. Then they give you room to have your own program and then write a feedback on what you experience, the challenges, if you want this to continue. Yeah, basically that's it. Okay, so they through that through that program, you've been able to establish a running NGO. Yes, I would say which that. Which is the Animal Aid Project. Yes. Okay, so what was the actual role of the Clinton Initiative program how did they help you right from the start of you trying to establish this up to this point have they supported you when you exited the program or that is the end when you move out of the program that is all so when you move out of the program you join their network of alumni where mm -hmm. you are invited to other fellowship programs or events to boost or motivate you they have series of programs community engagements other stuff you are also invited to be a mentor to the next cohort of fellows okay. where you share your experience and all that yeah okay okay so now you are mentoring other people as well 
For now, no, because since I was now finding my feet, I decided not to go in to opt for the mentoring aspects. So maybe mm. in a year to come, I will be able to have enough room to help other people come up. Okay. Did did they take you through a process? Were you in the US or where where was this? How, how did it happen? Was it a virtual thing or it was an in-person kind of mentorship and training? So um, initially, the fellowship is an in-person. And because of COVID, everything became virtual for like three years. Like oh, okay. It lasted and they resumed having in-person fellowship. But when I was elected, it was virtual fellowship. So we go through yeah. models. It was around eight, six to eight months long program. You go through models, you write exercises, you give reports. So you write community engagement, how to write a budget, how to tell your story. Basically, the tips you need to start a program running. Wow, great, great. So how has that program helped you, shaped you to become the person you are now? That program has been tremendous because if not for that program, I'm sure that my other projects will still be in my head, waiting for mm -hmm. 10 years to establish but then yeah. all i needed to do was to just take a leap with just one program and here we are we've had over four hours we had four outreaches already oh four outreaches already yeah in just three. yeah so great so tell us what actually is the animal ada project that you've established what are the objectives what are the goals what is actually what actually do you want to achieve with this so the Animal Asia Project, as you said, is a veterinary not-for-profit organization. We mm -hmm. go around various Ghanaian communities. We select communities that are in need or underserved in Ghana without access to veterinary clinics. We do mass vaccination, especially with rabies. Depending on the, depending on the community, if you go to a community, a farming community where they have sheep and goats, we do PPL vaccination also. We do community education okay. on rabies, how to prevent dog bites, etc. Okay, okay, okay. Our so objective... in effect, you you are giving back to the system. Mm -hmm. Our objective or our slogan is no animal is left behind because we believe animals don't, should not be denied access to veterinary care just because their owners can't afford it. So we go around giving free vaccinations and community education. Okay. Okay. So you are, you are giving back to the society and how is the community in which you are doing those engagements, how are they receiving these kind of acts from you? Well, when we go to the community, it's just beautiful. People come with their animals for us to vaccinate. People are attentive when we educate them. And sometimes the way they thank us is just so nice. Because if we hadn't been there, maybe that animal wouldn't have gotten access to getting a rabies vaccination than sometimes the vet is like five towns away from them. They don't have the means to transport their dogs just for rabies vaccination. And they are glad that at least someone has taught them how dangerous rabies is. And they are grateful that even though they were living with a potentially deadly virus, at least their dog is safe for a year. Okay. Okay, so uh, your main focus is on rabies, right? Yes, because a lot of people don't know about rabies. A lot of people don't take action or vaccinate their dogs. But depends on the community we go to. If there are other farm animals, we also tackle their aspect of vaccination also, like PPR. Okay, okay. So... Talking about rabies, which is a zoonotic disease, which most people do not know about. Can you take time to educate us about what rabies is, 
why the animal ADA project decided to just focus on rabies as a zoonotic disease. Okay, so rabies is a very fatal or deadly viral disease that one symptoms or signs that there is no cure. And it makes it really, really deadly because there are other diseases that once you start showing signs of feeling sick, at least you have medications to support you to help build your immune system to fight the disease for you to yeah. get better. But for mm -hmm. rabies, it's not like that. Once you start feeling sick and it's rabies, that's the end. You are going to die. There's no two ways about it. And it's very sad that a disease like this, which there's no cure, but it's 100% preventable just through one vaccination of your pets. It's not being taken seriously. And it's claiming lives, innocent lives, innocent children, most especially children under 15, because once they are bitten, they are afraid of telling their parents because they'll be beaten at home. And they keep yeah. it to themselves, only to get rabies like a few weeks, a few months later. And it's just so sad. So we decided to make that our main focus because it's endemic in Ghana. It is very common in Ghana. And because mm. people are shy or it's seen as a disgrace to die from rabies, people don't report it. So people think it's something so far away from us, but it's not. Okay. 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 How how do they manifest in, in humans? How do they manifest, first of all, in animals before when they, they are transmitted to humans? How do they also manifest in humans as well? And to be able to tell the difference that, yes, if this, is, this person is showing certain kind of signs, I can more or less tentatively say that this could be rabies and therefore immediate attention needs to be sought. Okay. So rabies affect the central nervous system, both in humans, both in animals. And there are two forms, the, the furious rabies and the down rabies. The furious rabies is the aggressive form of rabies, which we normally see in our animals, or people think that is the only sign of rabies that you get, where the animal yeah. behaving aggressive, over-aggressively, as if it's mad, drooling, biting anything that passes by. But there's also the dumb form where the animal suddenly becomes overly friendly, gets paralyzed, and then dies. And then the end mm -hmm. point of rabies is that no matter what, so once the animal is showing signs, it's going to die. Animals also get the fear of water, just like humans do. For humans, the first sign of rabies is having a tingling pain or sensation around where you were bitten or scratched where after the wound has supposedly healed off, you start having fevers, start having chills. Some get hallucination. There's fear of water because your throat muscles are affected. Some back like dogs, which oh, wow. is very some way. Yes, some actually back like dogs. You have, you, have you encountered such occasion before where a rabid um, infected human exhibited those signs like back acting like a dog? I haven't seen one personally before, but I've seen videos of it all around and it's just not nice. It's a disease you wouldn't wish for your enemy to even get. Okay. 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 So you, you are in the communities. Basically, how many animals in all do you think when you started this project you've been able to vaccinate and then it's it's kind of having a positive impact on those communities as well okay so we vaccinated over 390 animals against rabies we mm -hmm. vaccinated 512 animals against ppl okay okay Okay. You keep mention of PPL. I know it's also one of the conditions in livestock as well. What What is it with regards to just a simple statement about it? Okay. PPL is a French um, word because it was discovered first in Ivory Coast. So it's mm. called Pestis de Petit Rumina. It affects sheep and goats, causing severe diarrhea and they can't eat and that also leads to death. And in our setting, sheep and goats is 
people's livelihood, they support livelihood. And yeah. you can just wake up and your whole head is dead. And it's very devastating. Okay. 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 So you are doing this or you've been doing this for quite some time now. So I just want to find out how did your upbringing and more or less early experiences influences or influence this passion that you have for this um, kind of volunteerism and then trying to also make sure that animals are well kept. Okay, so my upbringing was very fun. I grew up with animals. We had so dogs. you grew up with animals. Yes, we had dogs at home. We had sheep and goats at home. We had chicken, and my family or my parents made us believe that animals should be treated well. Mm. They are mm. more or less like family. So we yeah. give them we give them names. Even a sheep and goats, everyone had a name. We speak, they listen, and we didn't really have the intensive system. So even yeah. even though our house was walled, we and the sheep had a pen in the house. We opened them for and them to walk around the house. Anytime you come to the house, you either see a dog walking around, or you see a sheep, or you see a goat passing by, or you see a chicken passing by. And my friends were amazed that, like, we literally named the goats, but yet we still ate them. Mm, mm, mm. So you've been with these animals all through your life, and then yeah. that is why you've picked that passion from and You are making sure that animals are well kept, and then so that they are not able to transmit any kind of diseases from animals to humans. Exactly. Yeah, because I know that about 70% of human diseases are from animals. And therefore, when you want to prevent these diseases, once you keep the animals well, it means that the humans will also be a bit free from, from these diseases as well. Absolutely. That's correct. Great, great, great. Uh, you, are, you are doing a great job. Do you, do you have supporters and staffs? How have you been going about these activities are you alone or you have a team of people helping you to execute this project? Okay, I have a team helping us. Everyone plays diverse role. And you'll be mm. surprised that there are just two vets on the team. The rest okay. are from different professions. We have nurses, oh. we have accountants, we have social scientists, we have computer engineering engineers. Yes, and everyone has a role they play to support the program mm. or mm. the a, the projects from running. Yes. Oh, okay. So, how do you establish a non-governmental organization or a non-profit organization like the Animal Aid Project? How? What processes did you go through, or you just say I've established the 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 project? That is all, and it's running. No. So it depends on your country. Every country has their regulations. But first mm -hmm. and foremost, you need to sit down and identify your passion. Identify what you want to do to create a change. Write a plan down. Get people to help you set it up. Then you go register it. So before you register, you'll be asked for more like a business plan. But this time, yeah. you're not making money out of it. So mm -hmm. you register it. You get your exemptions everything you get an office if you your com your country requires you having an office space and yeah. all that then you start a little at a time one program at a time by the time you realize it's up and running no okay 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 so if if i have an idea that i i want to give back to the society what kind of advice will you give me? How, if I say I'm coming to you for you to, to kind of guide me or coach me, what are you going to do to me to make sure that that idea becomes a reality? Well, first and foremost, I'll tell you to go for it. Mm. Ideas to you might be something small, but then tiny jobs make a mighty ocean. It's just a little step that you need to take to make it work. So you sit down, you have an idea, plan, what do you want to do? How do you want to achieve it? Is money involved? Who is going to help you get the money? 
How are you going to raise the money? Do you need support from family? Do you need support from friends? Are you going to travel? You put all these things down. Once you are set, you can launch it. You don't need to have a million dollars in your account. Even with mm -hmm. just a little, it can be 10 CDs. It can be $10. You can start. You can start with your next door neighbor. Maybe your neighbor needs someone to babysit their children for me. You can start yeah. with that. With time, you begin to expand your services and then you take it from there. Okay. Okay. So the moment I, I have the idea, I just need to make a conscious effort to start it, to take action. Exactly. You can also talk to a few people to see if it's laudable, if it's a work. Because sometimes we all have sort of crazy ideas that honestly it won't work at the moment. You just need to modify it a bit and you are good mm. to go. Mm. So with respect to this animal aider project, going about your duties, traveling all over, I know along the lines you face some challenges as a volunteer with your team. What are some of the challenges? Can you throw light on it for us to know what you've gone through right from the establishment of this um, animal aider project up to this point? What are some of the challenges that you've gone through? Okay, some of the challenges have been monetary wise, getting mm. enough funds to provide free vaccination for animals because we have to buy the vaccines and then go distribute. So if we don't have enough money in our coffers, it makes it very difficult to do that. And then also publicity wise, because a lot of people still don't understand why they need to have regards for animals. They just see yeah. them as objects walking around, eating leftovers. Why should I support a program that is helping animals? People mm. think, I mean, if it was we giving aid to humans, I'm sure we would have gotten enough money by now. But then when you tell them it's a veterinary organization, they just look at you like, I should give you money to go and inject an animal somewhere for free. Yes, it's 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 a bit disheartening, but gradually, gradually, we keep educating people. We keep telling people. Once you throw light on what you are doing, yeah. Then yeah. the importance of the vaccination, they are like, oh, wow, oh, this is good. Keep it up. Oh, just mm. have this little donation to help support it. Okay, okay, okay. So... With regards to all these challenges, how do you stay motivated? How do volunteers with your team and everybody, how do they stay motivated? Because the monetary aspect, I know you are not being paid. It's sometimes even you have to use your own money to do certain things. How are you motivated? How do you stay motivated in terms of in the face of these challenges? Well, one thing that's motivating me is that I'm helping save a life some way that I might never know. And it's it's nice. I'm just sure mm. one day when we all die we go to heaven, God will tell you that you see this girl, it was your vaccination that saved her life because the dog that bit her was vaccinated. And it just gives me joy to know that little by little I'm helping someone out there that to help them survive. And to help mm -hmm. other animals who might not necessarily have even had a chance to receive veterinary care, get help somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you give back to the society and what role does co the community coming together to support whatever you are doing? What role does it play in the success of these projects? Well, the community is, has been amazing. I mean, if you are going to a community and you are not welcome, you can't mm -hmm. do anything there. Yeah. So in yeah. it, before we go, we talk to the district vets that you want to come to your community. Are there any specific areas that you think they will need? Are there any specific areas that you think they will need more of our assistance than others? So... The vet helps us to select mm -hmm. the towns mm -hmm. most in need. He will speak to the assembly. They speak to the people. 
So by the time we come, the people are aware that something of this sort is going to happen. They mobilize themselves, come waiting for us. And when you are done, even the words of motivation and encouragement you receive from these community members are just so nice. And I mean, most of our volunteers we go with also comes from the community. The community actually okay. helps us with resources and it's, it's just nice. So it means that if you want to be a volunteer and you have a particular community in mind, you just need to establish a proper rapport with the community leaders so that you can infuse yourself in them and they also come on board. Exactly. Okay. 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 So you've done this for quite a number of years, over two years now, right? What 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 are some of the rewarding outcomes that you've had over these two years that you say, okay, I'm satisfied with this kind of results that we are getting, the kind of responses we are receiving from this kind of uh, place or this community, we are satisfied. Okay, so at the end of every outreach, I think I look at the numbers that we vaccinated, the numbers of people that we've spoken to. And when we started our very first outreach, we had around 30 animals. Mm. By the second outreach, we hit over 100. And okay. It, it's very rewarding for me. During my down moments, I think I look at our pictures, our videos, and I'm like, no, <laughs> this can't stop. We have people's to keep going. Yes, people's lives depend on it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you 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 tend to sit back, and then you watch what you have done, and it motivates you to keep going. Exactly. Yes. Hmm. What What about the other team members who sit back and then watch you? What are some of the things they do that keeps you going? Because I know that sometimes it's not only about the leader. Those people also supporting you should also be in the spirit for, for you to keep going. My team members are wonderful. If I'm feeling down and maybe I call for a team meeting and I just let them know how things are not going well and then someone mm. just looks at me like, okay, you are doing so well. This is not the time to give up. We are here. We just, we just see. and we brainstorm ideas and voila, what it, what I was thinking was so hard to solve looks yeah. very little in my eyes and we take it from there. And I'm really grateful I have oh, okay. such a team like that. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, 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 okay. So at the end of the day, you've been able to establish animal aider project it's running effectively or successfully and so you think that you are making an impact you are giving back properly to the society where you find yourself so at the end of the day these are some of the things that happens with most volunteers they they get to a point where they want to give up on the journey at what point or what will happen to you that will make you say you want to give up on this journey? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually don't know. But I think whatever that reason will be, will be something that will be beyond anyone's mm -hmm. control to solve the situation. But I'm sure they oh, won't okay, okay. give up with the Animal Aid projects. Mm, mm, mm. so through all this what has been your biggest inspiration in your journey of creating social impact and then why why are you so inspired to keep, continue you know doing this for people free of charge my greatest inspiration actually has been my mentor and my supervisor when i was in this group She's just mm. an amazing woman that loves animals and loves the people with the animals and just wants to do anything to make sure the animal is fine. There are days yeah. when she just encourages at the clinic that, oh, if they come and 
you need to run labs and make trees when they don't have money. Just mm. do the labs, I'll pay. And it's it's just so nice to see someone actually care to make the world a better place. A better and place. It's just, yes, and it's just inspiring. And I also oh, okay. feel we, in our own little way, can make the world a better place. We look up to the developed countries and we are like, I want to be there, we want to get there. But how are we getting there? And this is my goal. A little step at a time. We mm-hmm. too, we would get there. And it's my yeah. dream to have a rabbit free country because, Charlie, when you see a dog walking by the street, the way your heart will be doing chemistries because you are not too sure whether this dog has rabies or not. No, yeah. we, yeah. we yeah. can't keep living in this fear. Mm-hmm. And that's, mm-hmm. that's one of my inspirations. Do you look forward to a future collaboration with other NGOs or other vet outreach programs? Have people or have have there been a situation where people have reached out to you that let's collaborate to do this bigger? I do have a dream to collaborate with other people, other institutions other personal organizations to make this work. And I think it's all about we going out there for people to know what we do. For our very yeah. first outreach, we were very grateful to have vaccines from Mission Rabies okay. to start oh. because we didn't have anything to start with to run the program, to write the commitment to action for Clinton Global Initiative. So that yeah. was very amazing to get that support. And I wish certain things will continue where we can have collaborations with other NGOs, other veterinary organizations to make this bigger. Okay, so with respect to sponsorship, as you just spoke about uh, Mission Rabies, how can volunteers or how do volunteers secure sponsorship or funding for the activities? Can you throw light, more light on it for us to know ways and means in which, like the Animal Aid Project, how do you get support? In which ways do you do that? Okay, so mainly our support has been from our friends and our family. We do mm-hmm. a call for donation, which we share around asking people to support as little as they can. And yeah. it will amaze you that you can get people giving as little as 20 CDs. But let that continue. You get 10 people giving you 20 CDs every day for a month. And yeah. that's a lot of money to actually buy them. So we mm. don't go asking for so big at a time. We just ask you the little that you have, just support with, just support no. your person. We take care okay. of them. Okay. So mostly it's the people who are supporting you, friends and family, and you know other people within the community who are giving exactly. it back to you, so that you also give back to the larger community. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, apart from mission rabies, have you had an encounter with other external, you know, agencies or organizations whom you've called on for support? Yes, apart from mission rabies, we've been glad to have support from Thelma Animal Hospital, giving us okay. monetary support to help our project run. Mm-hmm. And okay. yes, before I forget, so last year we had a seed grant from the Pollination Project. It's a US-based organization that gives grants to people making a difference in various parts of the world. And okay. that actually helped us a lot with our outreach last year too. And mm. I'd like to thank them a lot because that money was a lot. So the thousand dollar seed grant. Oh, that's great. That's great. So they, they are coming on board this year. You are doing it this year, right? Yes. Our outreach is in 25th September. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. So have organizations, have they come on board or they are, they are yet to bring their sponsorship as well? Yes, we are yet to receive sponsorship from other organizations. But so far, we've had donations from friends and other people in the community. We've had donations from Tamanima Hospital as well. But we still look forward to having more donations. I mean, we have two weeks to 25th September, so it's still not too late to support us. 
Okay. 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 You, you are a vet surgeon in Ghana. You are practicing vet surgeon. Yes. Why veterinary medicine and why did you decide to go in the, into this space of medicine, not the other medicine? Well, I don't think I decided. I actually don't know how I became a vet. I think I've just, maybe because I grew up with animals, but I've just liked animals from day one. I was mm. always the person that if there's something wrong with an animal, they'll come and ask me. I mean, when we're playing as kids, they'll come and ask me, maybe they'll bring a bed. What should we do? Yeah. We just try to put gents on the wound and whatnot. And I was like, oh, okay, I think I, I, I want to do this. And mm. that's is, that's is, that's is how I, I, I go. I go. Okay, so your passion has played into something which is now magnifying itself into a proper reality. Exactly. Okay. So where do you see yourself in the next few years taking the animal aid project yourself as a person, as a vet surgeon? Where do you want to, where are you heading towards as, as the CEO or founder of the animal aid project? So in the next few years, I want to see the Animal Aider Project as a fully functional NGO with an established charity clinic. And that is what mm. I'm looking forward to. For us to make impacts, not just in Ghana, but around the world where people need help. I also want to specialize in public health and health promotion to help me help the Animal Aider Project to grow to know what exactly we need to help people in terms of safeguarding their health as well as their animals also. Oh, okay. 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 That that's really a big a big plan. Yes. So I know that yes, you've put in place plans that is which is going to help you to to achieve all these these things you are you are talking about. And um yes, the 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 project is functioning and everything is happening. How can listeners, viewers, how can people who want to support after watching this video, you know, listening to this audio, how can they can can they support you or come back to you? Okay, so that is um, on every or most of the social media um, channels that we have. We are on Facebook. We are on LinkedIn, we are on Instagram, we are on X. You can okay. join us there. We are on Shreds, the majority. Oh, yeah. So you just search the Animal mm -hmm. Aider Project and then you see us. Our call for donation flyers are on our pages. If you want to donate, you can. There are numbers there. There's a bank account there for you to donate also if you want to donate in kind maybe you have a pair of gloves that you want to give to us there are also numbers you can call or you can just send a dm and then we'll attend to you if international transfer you can send a dm we'll just send you the swift and the sort code and you can send us your money and we'll be so grateful to have everyone connect with us follow us to see the work that you are doing and support us also Oh, great, great, great. So you think everyone should be a volunteer? Well, if everyone becomes a volunteer, the world will be a better place. But I don't think everyone is actually cut out to be a volunteer. And it's not too bad if you don't have the spirit of volunteerism. What mm -hmm. you can do if you are not cut out for volunteerism is to support organizations that are actually helping to make the world a better place. That's way yeah. it's a win-win for everyone. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. That is that is that is really great. That is really great. So, what will be your final advice to people, to listeners, to viewers, and to everyone who have access to this video and then the audio as well, in terms of giving back to the society, and then also to volunteering organizations okay so my final advice is that first and foremost rabies is real and it's not too far away okay. from you so let's be very careful and when bitten or scratched 
by it, it can even be your own dog and it might not necessarily need to show signs but you need to rush to the yeah. hospital as soon as possible and get yourself an antibabies vaccine. Also, my advice to people who want to volunteer is that just do it. You just you don't yeah. need to have everything figured out. Just yeah. take a leap and then do it. Talk to okay. people. Run your ideas with people that you trust and they can support you. They can keep you accountable. And that's it. You, you'll be good to go. Great, 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 great. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you so much for coming on board on this podcast and sharing your, you know, how you've done it up to this point with just an idea which has culminated into something bigger now and through the support of the um, Clinton Initiative Program, which you've been able to establish the Animal Elder Project mm -hmm. and you are doing so well giving back to the society. Yes, we know that, yes, you are going to extend your arms to other societies through the support of other agencies coming on board to support your, your organization as well. And thank you for coming on the King Obert podcast. I know today anyone, listeners, viewers who watch or listen to this video and audio will get to know the importance of giving back to the society and why it is that we all have to try in our own small way to make an impact in the society where we find ourselves to make sure that we are creating the world we want and indeed a better world as well. So thank you, Akwisia, for coming on board. This is the Ken Obed podcast. And until we meet in the next episode, stay motivated, stay energized, and let's be those who want to be the movers and the changers of this world. See you. Bye-bye.